EJ here. Time to put your curiosity caps on and get ready to dive into some science. Today, we're taking our learning to the kitchen. Let me start by asking you this. Have you ever noticed what happens to your banana if you don't eat it for a few days? Or maybe you've noticed something strange happens to your apple slices if you don't eat them right away either. Hmm. What do you notice these two citations have in common? That's right. In both situations, the fruit begins to turn brown. Oftentimes, we buy bananas at the supermarket when they are greenish yellow. However, over time, they start to develop brown spots. Something similar happens to an apple once it's cut open, right? The slices are usually a bright crisp of white. But leave them out for a little while, and they too start to change to a brownish color. And it's not just apples either. This same phenomenon happens with a variety of fruit. Maybe you've noticed it happens to your pears, peaches, and other fruits too. If you've ever had this happen to your fruit, you might be wondering, what is happening to my fruit? So what exactly is going on to cause this change in color? Is it still safe to eat? And is there anything we can do to prevent the fruit from turning brown? Luckily, with a little help from science, we can answer these questions and get back to eating our fruit in no time. Are you ready? Let's get to learning. As it turns out, both the browning of apple slices and banana peels are a result of the same scientific phenomenon happening with the fruit's cells and chemical reactions. This process is called enzymatic browning. Um, what? Let's back up. Different kinds of cells have different kinds of enzymes, a kind of protein, that help support the life and functionality of a living organism by creating and speeding up important chemical reactions. One important enzyme in the skin of fruit is called polyphenol oxidase, or PPO for short. Its job? To interact with something called phenols. These are organic chemical compounds found in, well, basically everything alive, including fruit. PPO interact with phenols through a process of oxidization, which basically means it encourages them to bond with oxygen atoms. And what happens next? A chemical reaction that results in the production of melanin. You heard that right. Melanin is the same pigment in people's skin that helps determine the color of their skin, hair, and eyes. So just like people's skin can turn darker or lighter when exposed to certain elements, like the sun, this happens to fruit when they are exposed to certain gases, like oxygen. So, simply put, enzymatic browning is a chemical reaction that leads to the browning of a fruit's skin or flesh. This is why your apple or pear slices start to turn that funky brown color if you don't eat them right away. And it's why, when you bite into an apple that is damaged by a puncture or bruise, you might be surprised with a spot of brown, mushy, icky flesh. While humans only have melanin in certain places, like our skin, plants, including fruits, have melanin everywhere which is why brown spots are found inside and outside the fruit. But what's really interesting about this is that even though our first reaction when we see brown fruit is usually ew, it's actually a way that fruits protect themselves. Say what? Let's say the fruit is punctured or dropped. The result is usually a soft spot that turns all mushy and brown, right? Well, that might be yucky to eat. That's actually the point. This rotten look is used as a way to discourage insects and animals from eating more of the fruit, hoping that insects and animals won't want to eat the brown fruit just like the people don't want to eat it. This browning is also a way for the apple to protect the rest of its flesh from further damage in the event of rot or infection. The production of melanin, aka the brown stuff, is used to slow down the rotting within the rest of the fruit. Cool, right? But here's the downside. Fruits can't tell the difference between rotting damage or pesky insects and hungry humans looking for a tasty and nutritious snack. So, to a piece of fruit, any invasion, including people cutting or biting into them, is treated the same. As it turns out, when we cut into an apple, we're actually damaging some of its cells. So what does the apple do? It responds by producing that protective melanin that creates the brown layer we see on our slices, or wherever we took a big bite. Now, think back to that process we talked about called oxidation. 
when we cut or bite into an apple, the white crisp flesh that was protected by the fruit's tough skin is now exposed to a whole lot of oxygen naturally found in the air. This causes the PPOs to work extra hard to protect that apple, which, you guessed it, means oxidation and a whole lot of melanin. But don't worry, a little brown, or even a lot of brown on your fruit isn't actually bad for you. It just looks a little different and might have a different texture or a slightly different taste. But before we give oxidation and melanin a bad reputation, you should know this same chemical reaction that turns fruit icky brown is actually the same process that turns cocoa, which then turns into yummy chocolate, the flavor and color it is too. So it's not all bad. Oxidation just impacts different plants, well, differently. But if you really don't like the look of that brown coating on your apple slices, there are a few tricks you can try to slow down the oxidation that triggers enzymatic browning. The easy answer? Restricting oxygen. Since enzymatic browning is triggered by oxidation, simply putting your apple slices in water and reducing the oxygen available to the PPOs will stop the browning as long as they are in water. So, if you're looking to pack up your lunchbox, you might want to look for a more long-term solution. This is where acidity comes into play. Certain acids, like those found in lemon juice, stop the browning process. How? Well, PPOs don't do well with high acidity. Therefore, a highly acidic liquid, like lemon juice, causes the PPOs to stall and not complete the enzymatic browning process. But be warned, it will leave a zingy citrus flavor on your fruit. But hey, you might prefer that to brown apple slices. There are plenty of other liquids out there that can interfere with and slow down enzymatic browning. I invite you to give it a try yourself. I mean, who doesn't love experiments? So go ahead, try placing apple slices in different liquids and see what works best. You can try clear soda, carbonated water, salt water, other fruit juices, vinegar, you name it. But before you go and try that experiment, we have another fruit browning mystery on our hands. So, if apple slices turn brown because the fruit has been damaged in some way, how do you explain fruits that turn brown without being bruised or cut open and exposed to oxygen? Well, I'm glad you asked. As it turns out, there is another chemical reaction that plays an important role in this type of color change in fruit before enzymatic browning takes place. Take a banana, for example. Have you ever grabbed that nice yellow banana you saw on the counter a few days ago, only to realize it now looks more like a spotted leopard than a bright yellow banana? While it might look concerning, that color change is actually a sign the fruit is ripening, not rotting, yet. This is another way that fruits experience enzymatic browning. This time, instead of oxygen, we're going to talk about a gas called ethylene. Ethylene is a gas that is found in the air and is naturally occurring in fruit. In fruit, it works as a hormone that is important in the ripening process. As it turns out, every fruit has some level of ethylene production that naturally occurs throughout its life. This cycle causes the fruit to ripen and eventually rot if not consumed. So why then do some fruits like apples stay fresh and keep their color a lot longer than others, like bananas? Some fruits, like bananas, produce a lot of ethylene during their ripening cycle. The more ethylene, the quicker the ripening. The quicker the ripening, the quicker the browning. Why? Well, during this ripening process, the green pigments we see in all unripe fruit are broken down and replaced with more colorful pigments that we use as a sign of being ripe and ready to eat. But for fruits with high amounts of ethylene, like bananas, the pretty pigments we know and love, like the yellow of a banana, eventually begin to die. This is when, similar to being bruised, bitten into, or cut open, the fruit tries to protect itself. To protect itself, the fruit begins the process of enzymatic browning, to slow down the rotting process and protect whatever is left of the fruit. That's why bananas, as they ripen, develop brown spots 
and eventually turned completely brown and mushy. But on the bright side, browning bananas, as long as they aren't totally rotten, are actually sweeter than their greener or more yellow friends. So before you toss away a browning banana, know that they come in handy when you are making certain baked goods, like delicious banana bread. Talk about yummy. This naturally occurring browning and ripening is one of the reasons why you want to pay attention to how you store different fruits. For one thing, keeping fruits stored in a cool place will help slow down the ethylene production and therefore ripening of the fruit. But certain fruits, like bananas, will always ripen faster than others, like apples, due to the difference in naturally occurring ethylene. So, another thing to keep in mind, the high amount of ethylene produced by fruits like bananas can trigger the ripening of other fruits nearby. Want to see for yourself? Try taking an unripe fruit like a hard avocado, yes those are fruits too, or a green banana and place it in a paper bag with a banana further along in the ripening process and therefore producing more ethylene. What do you think will happen? You guessed it! The ripened banana will actually cause the other less ripe fruit to become more ripe way faster than if it was left to ripen on its own. So go ahead, try that one at home and observe the magic of science in your own kitchen. And if you really want ripe fruit to last, you can always freeze it when it's perfectly ripe and use it later for something fun like smoothies or homemade ice cream. Well, that's all we have for today. Remember. Before you get too grossed out by brown fruit, just remember that it's a totally natural process and won't do you any harm. So stay nourished and keep eating nature's candies, aka fruit. As always, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, stay curious my friends. We are thrilled that you're watching Blue Studios 24-7. We're so excited to bring round-the-clock entertainment and educational content to your home. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos. At Blue Studios, we aspire to revolutionize the way families spend time together. We empower families by providing them with tools to work together, earn and learn, and achieve new heights of success. Visit www.bluestudios.io to discover more about our mission and how we empower families to succeed. Thank you so much for being part of our community. Keep watching and learning with us. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.